Hello, welcome to the Maya Toolbelt. This is Michael McKinley, and we're going to talk about converting NURBS to polygons. There's two main areas of Maya. I'm sure there's more. There's two main areas you'll find these options. First, of course, there's the modify convert NURBS to polygons right here. And we're going to talk about all of these options. Edit reset settings. So all these options here are the standard default settings for the convert NURBS to polygons. And you'll, but you'll find these exact same settings in another section of under the surfaces uh, menu. You'll find all of, all of these surfaces commands, and in almost all of their options, if I go to revolve options, edit reset, you'll see output geometry, and you can choose to output NURBS polygons, subdivision surfaces, or bezier. If you click the polygons, you're going to get these same settings as the convert NURBS to polygons options your output of this revolve command will be polygons using these same settings if you go to say BiRail, BiRail 2 options and edit reset output geometry right here polygons and you have the same settings so we're just going to go over all these settings here and just be easier to see it all under the modify convert NURBS to polygons options and we'll get these are the concise list of options we'll be talking about as opposed to having revolve options mixed in there and potentially confuse anybody. So these are the options we're going to talk about. And again, the way I got here, I went to modify, convert, NURBS to polygons, and then click the little box here for options. So lots of options to talk about. And in order for this to really get working, we need to have some NURBS objects to convert. Um, so first we're going to talk about attaching multiple output meshes and it's a little bit confusing because just so you know if you're going to surfaces revolve options and output geometry polygons you'll see that option right here attach multiple output meshes it doesn't really work for these revolve and such this is mainly for convert for converting and not for using revolve and uh, boundary and all these commands up here it's just included in the list because it's just pulling from the same convert options that we're going to be talking about so it's a little bit confusing in that sense because if you have multiple things you're trying to revolve and you want them to connect together you would potentially it's say oh yeah here's, here's a little checkbox I can use but it won't do anything I'll just even demonstrate that real quick if I have to split this video up into multiple parts I will just because it might be a little bit long trying to go over everything in detail and not rushing. So I'm just going to make a really quick vase or whatever. And we're going to have a video going over Revolve later, so don't worry about this right now. But let's say I just duplicate this, move it out here. So I got two of them. So I say I select both of these and I want to revolve them both. And oh, I want to attach them together. Attach multiple output meshes. Let's just attach them revolve it won't actually do it they're not attached okay now, I've tried it multiple ways of like putting the, the lip of the vases like right next to each other thinking maybe that would do it but it doesn't really work yep this attach option is only for when you're converting for the most part I'm going to create a NURBS uh, cylinder And the way NURBS works, and I'll have, <laughs> I'm talking about lots of stuff I'm going to talk about later. But uh, for NURBS, you can't have a real NURBS cylinder. If you look on the outliner here, you'll see there's a bottom cap surface, top cap surface, and then the actual cylinder itself. I'm just going to delete the two caps, leaving just the cylindrical part. I'm just going to duplicate it, move it up here. So I'm going to convert both of these at the same time. So I'm selecting both modify convert nervous polygons options attach multiple output meshes and then apply now you see nothing happened because of the merge tolerance is really low and what that means is the tolerance is a distance that it will look for another mesh to attach so if I increase this merge tolerance like way up here and hit apply and now we have a result and the geometry is a little funky it would need to be adjusted and we're going to talk about all these options down here that will also affect how the geometry looks after conversion but you can see that the two meshes were converted and then attached together 
that's what this did and emerge tolerance is again the distance it's looking for between the two objects to attach them and I had to increase that tolerance up for this distance here so you have to play with that so we delete that object here and I think at this point I can I think I've covered attach pretty well and we're going to go on so we have a checkbox here for match render tessellation if you noticed whenever I did I'm just going to hit apply without it checked and we'll see what we get alright so we got this you'll see that the edges here if you just look at the profiles let me go to the top view it might be easier to see so the one on the left is my NURB surface you see it's nice and round and the one on my right is my polygon surface and it's round but you can see that it's faceted you can see a straight line corner straight line corner straight line so it's not quite as round as the NURB circle or cylinder because it's a polygon object it's a little bit chunky. So to fix that, if I delete this, if I choose match render tessellation, all of these options gray out because th these all determine the tessellation method and type of your conversion. If you match render tessellation, it's going to throw all that at the window. Just look at what it, what the NURB surface is doing and hit apply, and you can see it's a lot more dense of a polygon object that results, but the smoothness is identical. If I go back to my top view and look at both of these, you can see there's no discernible difference between the NURBS one and the Polygons one because the Polygon output has now matched the tessellation of the NURBS one. Okay, so that's match render tessellation. Uncheck that. So now we get into some more options here. We have type, triangles, or quads. So just make sure uh, you understand how this is laid out. Type has these two options right next to it and then these four options are associated with tessellation method so I don't want you to confuse all these options that are so close together and laid out really closely together it could look like six of these are options for one thing but type has two options triangles and quads and then tessellation method down here has these four options so right now we're looking at type and quite literally the output right now has been triangles so every time we hit apply we're getting a triangulated object as a result. I delete that and choose quads, hit apply, and now we don't have the triangle triangulation of the mesh. Simple as that. Like that. I like to use quads mainly just because it's cleaner, uh, especially when you're working with polygons. Uh, even in the back in the old days of creating video game art, you had to triangulate everything or game engines wouldn't render it properly. Game engines have advanced since then where they will automatically tessellate things. So you don't necessarily need to have everything be triangles all the time. You can choose quads and then if you need to, depending on whatever game engine you're using, you can triangulate it later. So I like to use quads most of the time. So I'm going to choose quads now just because it's a lot cleaner look. And you can more easily see what's going on. And now we get the tessellation method. Now tessellation method has a lot of stuff in it. And if I hit edit, reset, and choose quads again. So tessellation method has four options to choose from. We have general, count, and I say general, and then you see these options all change based on it being the general tessellation method. Count, the option changes to the count slider here. Standard fit, which gets these uh, sliders for all these different things, and then control points has no other options applied to it. Standard fit is the default one and it uses a lot of math which I'm not the greatest math expert in the world so I couldn't begin to really explain it but if I select my NURBS object with standard fit with these default options hit apply move it out here let's try it rearrange a little bit <clears throat> you see we get this result and I'm gonna keep this result just so we can try, try and see some changes and I'm going to try and just really adjust these sliders really dramatically and see what happens. I'm not going to promise that we get a lot of uh, variance in what happens just because I don't really mess with these very much. So usually, most of the time, the default values here get a pretty good shape result from the NURB surface. So I don't really mess with these too much. But I'm going to try and just really throw these things out of whack and just see what kind of result we get. 
Okay, there we go. So you can see just by messing with these things, we really change how this tessellation happens in the object. And you, really it's just a matter of playing with it and getting the kind of result you want. Personally, I don't really use standard fit that much when I use um, converting, when I especially with the surfaces commands up here. I like to have a lot of control over it. And to me, just my preference, these sliders are kind of guesswork. You know, I, had, I pretty much just guessed on what... <laughs> I had no idea I was going to get this result when I did this, you know, for example. And that, that's not a lot. That's not a lot of control, in my opinion. So let's just delete that. Okay. I'm going to edit, reset my settings back to the original standard fit, just in case that throws me off on my future work. Wouldn't want that to happen. Let's talk about control points. Control points has no other options uh, associated with it, but control points are. Uh, part of a NURB surface you have control vertex it's the same thing by select control vertex components you can see all these little purple dots that show up and the control points will use those dots as the ver vertices of the polygon output that you get so I select this NURB surface using control points hit apply and you can see I get my polygon geometry based on where those dots were so if my NURB surface was more complex. Let's say if I create a NURB sphere, for example, for this. I'll create, I'll create uh, two spheres. So for this one, I will increase the geometry quite a bit. I'm going to turn, uh, there we go. Now I can see the wireframe on the shaded meshes and turn off my grid. This is a little bit get a little get a little crowded. Alright, so this one's control vertices you see are pretty dense. While this one not quite so much. And you also especially it's especially useful to see on a spherical object or at least a rounded object because the control vertices are not necessarily always touching the surface of the mesh. This one is a lot more dense, so it's closer, although you can still see they are kind of floating above the surface. This one's especially noticeable. All these points are kind of out here in space. And it's going to use those points to convert NURBS to polygons with these options. So you can kind of see, you'll see what happens. When I go to modify, or here we go. You'll see what happens when I use control points for my tessellation method. Hit apply. You can see that the polygon sphere that gets created, if I put it on top of the sphere you see the sphere is all inside it. it's not exactly matching the sphere's shape at all it's using those points and they, those points were floating out here above the sphere's surface so the resulting polygon object the points are out here above the sphere surface if I select this one and hit apply it's a lot closer because of the increased density that's what control points does get rid of all that Back to my original cylinder here. Let's go with count. Uh, count is you're trying to tell it how many polygons you want to result in. If I go to uh, display, heads up display, poly count. It will give me a visual reference of how many polygons are on the screen or and on the, within the object I have selected. This is a NURBS object, so obviously no polygons are selected. But if I want a count of 200 polygons resulting from my conversion it will do its Maya will do its best to create a cylinder with 200 polygons or at least as close to it as it can and maintaining this cylindrical shape so I hit apply I get this cylinder and over here you see faces are 192 so it got as close as it could to 200 and maintaining a shape if I delete this and say I want a count of 100 hit apply so now my cylinder has 102 faces so it went a little bit over but it's still as close as it could get in maintaining the shape if I delete this and go with let's say 25 hit apply you see this cylinder has 24 faces so if you really have a count a certain count on your polygons that you're going for a lot of games have limitations on uh, how how many polygons you can have on the screen at once so 
lot of things have polygon budgets. So a character will have so many polygons that it has budgeted for it, or a car will have so many polygons budgeted for it, and so on. So this could be a good way of getting uh, as close to a certain polygon budget on your conversion as you can.